the second one, uh, I love that picture. I need to recognize that I and and I bought that picture now in in New York. Is the Chantamani? Uh, yes. He painted Chantamani different in different times of the history, but you choose that one, no? The why that one, and what is the powerful in that picture? Yes, uh, let's look at what is Chintamani. Um, Chintamani, it is translated as a philosopher's stone, um, but in, when you come from German, uh, you say Stein der Weisen, stone of the wise people, not the philosophers. With the philosophers, you think those who are very learned and, and speak a lot of things, but the, the sages, um, they have the wisdom. And here, this uh, is a super uh, mundane stone, um, which was received and which is kept in, uh, the, uh, in between Shambhala and between, sometimes and within Sravasti, the seat of hierarchy. So uh, it says for some time it is um, kept with the hierarchy, for some time it is kept with the son of Kumara at the center of uh, um, the um, the, um, thresh, um, the power stronghold of power of, of um, the lot of the world, and so um, this in, um, is a, a picture with a fire. There are different paintings, but here um, in this, I choose this painting because the three points, which symbolize in one way the first, second, and third aspect of divinity. Um, they are together in the flames and they are on the back of the horse and shining in darkness with a blue radiance around and then again a little golden um, ye um, yellow and uh, they are uh, on the back of a horse. Um, this, it is in Tibetan trans um, uh, tradition uh, that Chindamani is being carried on the back of a, a white horse, a white steed, and uh, it is also in Mongolian and in other um, Eastern wisdom, uh, the knowledge of this um, um, cow transporting. The cow is a symbol also of nature, of uh, and um, uh, uh, it is, no, here it is, yes, I think it is, is it a horse or is it a cow? But I think it is a cow here, um, and um, which transports it, but um, you cannot clearly see. It is blue. It is carrying, it, there's a back, nearly dark black background. And from there, you see very intense uh, bluish colors at the bottom, radiant blue of um, uh, the night. Uh, and when you go up again, the sunrise. Um, and the, the, the mountains are already lightened by the rising sun of the morning. The horse carries this highest wisdom to down uh, into the valley, maybe also to humanity. And um, it is again um, an image of messaging, of bringing down from uh, sacred spaces um, um, this wisdom. In other paintings, you find a little casket, a little box uh, on the um, back of the horse, of the cow, whatever, and there it is um, carried inside, hidden. The, this uh, stone of highest wisdom is hidden. Here it is open in this painting, and uh, you directly see this shining light. And therefore, I choose this painting. And um, I am very much fascinated by this play of um, different shades of violet, blue, dark blue, a little lighter blue, the shadow between red and blue in the background, and um, this mysterious uh, shining uh, uh, there on the right side of um, the image. There are other paintings of the same symbolism uh, in different contexts he has done, but here is um, a very special 
um, hidden uh, radiance, not hidden, you can, you can see it, but it is, there's nobody else there. It is alone. It is in a mountain solitude. It bringing down from the solitude of highest mountains. There's no rider. You do not see anyone accompanying it. It comes by itself and down, it is going down. And uh, so towards the valley, towards the people, but bringing it from some height. And uh, in this, um, yes, um, this is the wisdom coming also down from the heights uh, into the valley where the people, where humanity is living. And uh, we know that Röhrich um, not only painted outer images, but in the outer symbolic images. Um, he has painted many, 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 many mountains where, of, of different known sceneries. But then there are uh, paintings which are symbolic, where there is a transition from the uh, outer plane to an inner plane. And when uh, in the inner plane, then there are suddenly symbols. These three points, which you see here on the back of the horse, are the three points he chose at the symbol of Shambhala. He chose as the, for the banner of peace, hanging in front of the Rurich Museum as well. He chose this symbol for the uh, um, 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 union for uh, uh, protecting uh, culture in times of war. And he saw it at many, many places in the East, in Mongolia, in uh, Tibet, and so as the symbol of the highest. And so um, all this you see depicted in this painting, it is not important what mountain it is. And the outer is not important. It is there this serene purity of the mountain heights, where you see some snow or like structures, and then you see it goes down into uh, dark valleys. And, and then this symbol on the back of a horse, it is like a vision, like uh, coming from another dimension, and there it comes down to earth. And, uh, and we, the viewers, stand there before and witness this um, extraordinary situation. It reminds me a little bit also of another very well-known picture of Nicholas Wurst. There's in the mountains, there's a, um, a stone or an object coming from the skies that is full of glow and light. And um, you suspect that there is somebody below watching. There's a figure that could be stones, but could also be a, a human consciousness watching that. Mm -hmm. But the silence of wisdom coming down, uh, and you know that then this, this wisdom will spread in the background silently. And the other thing that comes to my mind also is how this special stone of power that is not from the earth is kept in many traditions, included the Ark of the Covenant. So when you when you look at this, you also think of of um, this, this ark that the the people of of Israel move along the desert and took always with them that had special power and where it was the the deep uh, materialization in a in a powerful stone of all their wisdom. So um, this is something that is very deep rooted in our in our consciousness. Yes. So we have. Now another another picture that is th this is perhaps the most well known picture. Yes. There are many people that know it, and sometimes they do not know that this was done by Nicolas Redick, but it has become in a way the the representation of the all pervading mother without a name, without yes. um, a religion. This is the picture of the mother of the world. Yes, um, it is. Uh... An absolutely extraordinary painting, and, um, and when I saw it there in New York, I was filled with awe. And when you look at it, um, there, were, there are many details, and you see the at first mother covered with a veil around the upper part of the head, 
it is the part where we have most of the senses, the eyes, the ears uh, are there, and these are turned inward. They're not going outward, but they're totally inward. And um, you feel the look, but the look itself is hidden. You see the hands blessing in a, both hands in a, a form of blessing, directing energies of the heart outside. And the, this area of heart is given in rose colors, the color of the heart there. And um, then you see this veil around, there's one veil over the head, and then a beautiful veil around the mother. It reminds of um, the veil of Isis, where truth is veiled. And the, you cannot see the truth under the veil. You see the outer forms. And, uh, and here you see many outer forms. You see animal and plant forms on um, the cloak of the mother. And um, the, it is at the same time a, a sacred cloth. It is uh, very artistically uh, uh, painted and it, it can be a queen and it might be the, the queen of heavens here, the mother of the world, as it says, and this is also the queen of heavens. And in the background and around her, there is silvery color. Silver is the color of reflection. It is the color of moon. It is the color, uh, color of mother. And in this also, it says in all the paintings that there's a rainbow of the, of the aura around of the different colors. And here you see many, many fluctuations. They, he painted like a river uh, around, a flow of a river going around the head and then around most part of uh, the, uh, her back. And then the, the greater aura of violet, uh, bluish energies radiating out into um, a background of a, a, a grayish blue. And it is like the depth of night heaven. And before this background, you see many figures. In other paintings, when he did the mother, there were just stars. But these are also probably just stars. When you look exactly to the right side, you see the form here of the um, um, Big Dipper, the, the Great Bear, the symbol of the seven rishis there. And um, there could be another constellation indicated on the other side. It might be Orion, the three stars there together, but it goes beyond the visual. The uh, Great Bear is the seed of all wisdom of the uh, seven rays coming down, of the seven uh, great sages, uh, they are called the seven rishis. The constellation of the great bear is called the seven rishis. And they adore the mother. They adore uh, the great principle of revealing beauty, expressing the creation. The mother, world mother, is the expression um, from the background into manifestation. And this is uh, the mother of the world. She is sitting on some cushion-like structures on some kind of a, an island structure below, and then again surrounded by water. Water is space, is ether. And you see this, the, the ether of space in the top, and you see the waters also below. And it is like a, a continuation of a greater wheel now in the waters, watery sphere below, where you see the fish. The fish are also this uh, life, the life in, um, uh, in the, um, the water gives life, and, and the, the fish represent also the, um, the living beings there, the, the animal uh, kingdom uh, there. And, and um, then when you go a little bit more to the front, you see one person holding a book on the right side. Uh, it might be the book of wisdom, received the wisdom from the mother and brought also down to earth. On the other side, you see um, 
another lady in violet colors, she's holding this casket. And this, uh, what I said, was also partly depicted on the back of the horse bringing down into the valleys. It is the receptacle for this uh, stone of wisdom. And so she uh, holds it to the mother or she just receives it from the mother, this wisdom, and bringing it down or receiving it from there. So the book, this uh, box, which you see there, is both uh, an expression and therefore was receiving the highest wisdom, receiving the highest energies to earth. And um, so this painting is like a big mandala and uh, this um, in, in perfect symmetry and, and beauty of the construction of the image uh, uh, and uh, the alignment uh, from the central axis with a great order in the uh, composition of the image, uh, symmetrically uh, constructed, be it the stones at the bottom, be it the little islands or the, the, the rocks on which the mother is sitting, be it um, the arrangement with the Buddhas, all is in a very harmonious composition. So, uh, most exquisite painting. For me, it's my favorite one I need to recognize. And was my first picture of Roeric that I saw in my life. And I never see that was the constellations behind. I only see that are. And when I know when you stay at the museum and you see that picture in, in the real life, for me, it's the presence that she radiates. No, this aura that she you can see at the picture, but shines not is the shine and the power that she transmits like like a pool of diamonds around her. Yeah. Yeah. And when the no she can see or listen anything for me is the the transmission of pure unconditional love. Yeah. Now for me, when I see that now the great mother is the pure experience of unconditional love yeah. and she radiates that to to all yeah. no to all his his siblings in the world yes and we have the last one um order yes. of dite tiempo is the name and it's also an aspect of sanat kumara we speak of sanat kumara behind she has very present no, already in different paintings of Sanat Kumara and in different forms. What represent that one? What is um, the I discovered this painting quite late. It was last year that I saw it. And I didn't know what who Ripton Jeppo was. A friend of mine um, went to, um, uh, I think, Nepal and was sent there by Master Puma and to visit a cave and to visit uh, the places of Rick and Jeppo. He thought it is Lord Maitreya. Partly people thought, yes, uh, might be Lord Maitreya, but it is not. Uh, Rick and Jeppo is then um, on Jeppo in, in different forms of expression is one of the many names of San Kumara. And here it says order of Rick and Jeppo. And the, it was painted in the last year of his life by Niklas Rorich. And for me, it is like the culmination of all what he had been creating. And uh, Nicholas and his wife, Helena, have been striving always to the highest. It says that they came into direct personal contact with Shambhala but didn't speak about it. They disappeared partly on their journeys and didn't tell the other people, but they went through incredible hardships to go there and they had an incredible will to be there in, in these areas. And this is the center of it. This is what attracted them there. This is the Lord of the world. And um, when you look at this painting and then, then the order, the composition of the painting, uh, it is at the very right side 
And it is like coming out of a cave. There's a high radiance and an elderly person holding some treasure in one hand and in the left hand and in the right hand, holding the right hand in the sign of blessing. Um, the clothing is some oriental garment and then there's fire behind. Uh, he's surrounded, his hand, head is surrounded by fire wearing a, 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 a crown and the, the hole is lighted by um, orange reddish light. These are uh, the colors of the energy of the will. Of in a little softened form, the orange, uh, the reddish orange, is like uh, a little transformed and um, uh, softened uh, expression of the energy of will, which Sanat Kumara expresses. And the radiance is so strong, you see it reflected on different rocks in the background. Uh, and um, you do not see how this light can come there. It is not the sunlight. There's no sunlight directly, but this uh, radiance coming out of the cave. And there is a, a rock stairway up, and on this stairway, you see riders on the painted uh, Mongo this, the Mongolian or uh, Tibetan uh, hats there. And part of the uh, ones is standing in front of Sana Kumara, bowing down there. there. There are three riders standing there, and the horse going up on the, of the one of the riders. Another a certain fourth one uh, he seems to want to ride away or to look back again. The, uh, there is a movement of the central horse there. And then there are more riders quickly going out. And this, they have received the order of Sana Kumara. They have the order of Rikton Japo. And this means when you have received the, the order of will of the higher, you immediately execute. You do not wait, you directly go. And you receive, and then you go. Many people, they are part-time spiritualists or just say, oh yes, when I think something got an idea, I do, I do not, not. Maybe, maybe not. And so this is not the energy of will. This is what has been uh, brought out by also Wurlich through the teachings of Agni Yoga. Agni Yoga means direct fire, expression of the divine will, also through wisdom expression. And here coming from this fiery source, um, Master Maria, who gave these uh, teachings to Helena Röhrig. Um, he is one of the close associates of uh, Sanat Kumara and of this energy of will. And um, so this painting uh, gives something which has been totally hidden from the outside for aeons of time. The people in the world do not believe in it. People in the world do not think that this exists they think it is an esoteric fairy tale, but they experience that it's a reality. And they experienced this reality, not only in the subtle planes, but in physical manifestation. And more so, um, it is not something which normal people can bear to be in this presence. Only very, very, very few uh, chosen ones wh whose system is strong enough to be in this the intensity of presence they can approach. For the others, it is like protected. It is guardian of the world, guardian, uh, keeping the balance and keeping the, the evolution on the planet in a good direction. And he has been, as he says in the wisdom teachings, um, um, watching over the planet and over, especially over humanity since 18 million years. He came down from uh, higher circles to earth and to stay here on earth and to guide the souls, the seeking souls until the last traveler, where the traveler finds the door uh, to higher planes. So for aeons of time, he is there. And here you see in the face, when you look in this painting, it is a very compassionate look. Uh, he looks like uh, 
a little bit down, but full, full of compassion, not uh, from a top-down look, but um, full of love and compassion. And so Röhrig has summarized in this painting, uh, for me, all what he wanted to express in, in his many, many teachings and many, many paintings, but it is the expression of the highest in which, with which he had come into contact. And therefore, I felt this is the climax of the paintings, although uh, it might not uh, be considered so from different uh, viewpoints, artistical viewpoints, but from the essence of what it is expressing. The mother of the world in all the softness and in all the uh, love and uh, sweetness of the night. And here, this fatherly aspect of will in all the strength, but contained in a cave and in a loving uh, gesture, uh, like modulated energies, uh, softened energies flowing out through the messengers, uh, through his presence into the world. And then the bluish um, spheres again you know, of the mountain uh, ranges in the background and the valley to which you look, this uh, is um, the, the highest light coming down into uh, the, uh, the spheres of human presence. Ludgar, this has been um, a whole um, voyage, a whole experience coming from the Annunciation, the, the, um, the promise that the energy will come to the fulfillment of, of this power that is sustaining uh, life in a way, conscious life on earth, uh, in a summit, in a cave, hidden, but persisting and irradiating from that center. I, I hope that um, all the inspiration that you share with us would also reach the people that, that watch this video, that they will be inspired to, to go and search and learn more from Nicolas and, and find uh, in his art another soul of um, of fulfillment of inspiration uh, and find through him the message of of the of the hierarchy of the planet to close um the, this wonderful friend talk that i feel this has been what do you feel is the message of nicholas today we are living in a world he lived in between wars and we are yes. living in a thermal point also yes. how is his art reminding us today um, of, of the message of higher planes. What is, what is his uh, view? What is his perspective? How is he still inspiring us today? He's made a lot of paintings uh, depicting the menace of the Great Wars. He has uh, given uh, burning spheres, um, he has uh, painted battlefields with many dead soldiers. He has painted uh, the horror of uh, war and also of all uh, ugliness people can express. And at the same time, there's the sacred. There is the presence of divine guidance. There is the presence of strongholds. And what he can give us for today, stay aligned, stay strong, and uh, stay with the light. And do not waver, but go what is and do what is necessary to keep up the light and to keep up uh, the orientation to the highest. So these paintings uh, inspire in this direction, and it is not by chance that many years after his passing, these paintings go out more and more of the planet and uh, keep on spreading their silent message out. Uh, people didn't like what he was saying, partly. He had a lot of adversaries, but the paintings are silent. They go out very silent, and the message goes out and is uh, conserved by those who uh, want to give it out. Many try to destroy the, pa the paintings or destroy museums, places where they, they were hold, but the paintings go on and they are digitally now everywhere. And the sacredness, everybody can... Um, be in this presence, and uh, this helps us to stay aligned. This helps us to be sure of the, and as a witness 
um, and a, a testimony of the reality of the subtle spheres. He shows that these spheres are not dream, but they are reality. And we need to be in the presence, knowing that these spheres are not a fairy tale, but they are a needed reality for today's uh, time of transitions. I was very touched by that conversation. I, I feel like also, like I say, it's, it's a friend talk, no? I only need a coffee. Yes. To feel mm -hmm. not that it's a very cozy moment. Thank you, Ludger and, and Cecilia, for sharing that, that experience and that moment. Thank you. Thank you. It was very, very beautiful to share with you. Yes. May it inspire the people. May it inspire the people. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you to both. Thank you.